Hello, this is Osun Henry 2, Fox Rock Time and Golf, and today we are to taking a look at the Spectrum emitted by one of these cheap pieces of garbage. This is uh, the cheapest radar detector one usually encounters, and it's complete garbage. So we have the radar detector here, it's sucking down 1200 milliamps. We have a VR62 horn, so nominal 12 to 18 gigahertz, but it works from 10 to up above 24 easily that it's receiving it from the detector it's of course showing nothing but we don't care that much it goes up our nice little spectrum analyzer up to 40 gigahertz and if we take a look we can easily see the first emitted peak at minus 14.8 dBm on 12 gigahertz approx. I, I have this on max hold, so we easily see the swept frequencies and peaks. And so when we move to the next one, we'll see it's on around 24 from 23.4 approx to 24 gigahertz with minus 30. 2.5 dBm leakage on uh, 24 gigahertz, and then we can still see that they're on the K above Ka band. We have stuff emitted quite clearly. The highest peak when, with this setup is on 24.87 gigahertz with minus 37.5 dBm emitter, which is quite a bit on these frequencies and it would likely if we had a more sensitive and wider band unit we'd see the harmonics going above and above. So why does this thing emit so much garbage? If we look inside there is a pretty pretty simple construction with the, all the smarts being in, inside the horn unit which just talks to the display and voice unit. So I have one uh, older model here, which is more or less the same. Slightly different construct, slightly different placement for pass, but basically the same. And here is the horn itself, with pretty basic construction. We got the ridged horn used as the feed. So if we take a look at the older one, we can see that there is a ridge inside the horn and it's just pressed so that this part of the ridge contacts here on the main microwave assembly. The ridge is likely used for the 10 GHz X-band stuff and 24 GHz K-band stuff. The feed, feed points here are likely used for the KA band and there's some band at an attempt at band pass filtering. There's uh, some neck, pent or gas pet chip here. We have a low pass filter for some frequency, likely above 2 gigahertz or some below 2 gigahertz or so. And it has a BFP 405 transistor used as an intermediate frequency amplifier, which pushes it to the logic board beneath it. On the local oscillator side, we have the oscillator transistor, two varactors and a buffer amplifier and a, a small bandpass filter feeding to the with we have some matching to the mixer and that's about it it sweeps the local oscillator thanks to the varactor series by pushing a voltage to those the incoming RF is mixed down to the intermediate frequency around 1 gigahertz and that goes to the logic board which then detects stuff and talks to the sound recorder chip and the display driver chip on the display unit with the buttons and tells it to display stuff and yell KA band, KA band and so on and it all goes through this one wire, this single, single direction serial connection also, this one had a micro USB connector 
or sorry, a mini USB, and it was not connected anywhere. It was a purely cosmetic thing. But when we look at the newer unit here, we notice that there is actually a line there that's connected somewhere in the, from the USB, but the data pins are not connected anywhere. So it's only pow powering something. I haven't actually checked it yet. But it powers something, but the switch mode power supply is more or less the same in this one as the older one. The inductor is the same value. It's about the same size. The, I checked that the chip is the same. So there is nothing new really. The display driver is likely beneath the board because this is the sound output chip and there is a small EEPROM for some configuration stuff likely so that it remember, remembers the settings when you turn it on and so on. So I'm gonna turn this open and then continue.